Hello, I'm Paul Pasley, and I'm going to be uh, talking a bit about plasticity and, uh, in addition, uh, fracture mechanics uh, toward the end, because fracture mechanics really is, uh, in many ways, for the oil industry. It's uh, an area that's uh, very closely tied to plasticity. My background is that I, I've taught in uh, several universities. And uh, finally, I got tired of that. I went off on my own. I've worked mostly for the oil industry since then. So uh, I hope I can put a little bit of the uh, oil industry flavor into this. Uh, I had to decide on some kind of a level to, to speak uh, to. And I'm assuming something like a bachelor's degree in either civil engineering or in uh, uh, mechanical engineering, but uh, petroleum engineering I'm sure would work. I'm just not as familiar with that. Um, and uh, if you if you can find a copy of Draco's book, then you might want to get it. But it's practically impossible to find it. I think it only had one edition, and it wasn't a popular book. What's the book called? I don't know. I don't have a copy. <laughs> okay. But it's, uh, and you got to be careful because he edited books with other people. And so you got to be sure <clears throat> that it's his book that you're, you're getting and not edited with somebody else, which would be a collection of papers by a variety of people. Anyway, we're, we're doing something simple. I Googled this stuff. I mean, this is, this is the best way to get stuff I know. But uh, on this, this slide showing some curves, the, uh, the upper left curve is the uh, garden variety description of a stress strain curve. And they're showing on the uh, horizontal axis the, the uh, change, it should be the change in length over the length. And, uh, on the vertical axis, they're showing the load over the area, which is, uh, they're not too careful to say which area there, but we're going to worry about that in a second. The, uh, the, the initial slope of the curve is Young's modulus, we all know that. Uh, then he's got some things labeled here, and I've never really been all that impressed with giving all these names to things. but. Uh, he, he has what's called the true elastic limit. I mean, it, it, he's saying that when you start, point one, you see is right at the beginning of the curve. And he's saying that it just practically isn't a true elastic, I mean, it's practically zero. And that's, if you want to be fussy, that's true. Uh, then there's a proportional limit where the curve starts to bend over. And then there's an elastic limit where if you unload it, uh, it will come back where it started. Um, but the true elastic limit would say that doesn't happen. <laughs> so, the, the, these things, you, you know, it's just the way all science is, I think. And then this offset yield strength, this, <clears throat> there's two kinds of definitions floating around about, about that. The one that's shown here is the one that everybody, I think, but the oil industry uses. And what, the, what you do, you can see on this, uh, on this upper left curve, that uh, you get up to some point, um, and you, it's point four on that figure, and you've loaded up to that point, and now you unload. And the uh, conventional wisdom is that the curve will come back at the same slope as its initial slope. So that's why it's showing Young's modulus the same both. And, of course, you do this after you've got the curve, but you find the point, four in this case, where the strain is 0.2% uh, of, of the, uh, it's, it's, it's really supposed to be the leftover strain. And uh, th that's, that's the kind of definition you find most everywhere, except in the oil industry. And there, they do something a little different. In, instead of this 0.2%, they, 
they use 0.5%. And instead of the slanted line, they use a vertical line. So maybe that's simpler. I, I don't know. I can't imagine it makes much difference. But uh, when you when you look at their uh, at their definitions in the oil industry, that's what they do. 